<laughs> First of all, I want to thank everyone, all my friends, family, and my new friends who uh, showed up today. Um, this is a very humbling experience, to say the least. Anyway, I'm Christine Hawkwist, and I'm running to be the governor of Vermont. <laughs> For governor for so many reasons. To foster real economic development in our rural communities, to improve our health care system, and to ensure children's access to quality public education. Yes. But most of all, I am running because I must. When I heard Muslim Girls Making Change speak at the Youth March in January, I realized that I had an obligation to them and to all Vermonters to move Vermont forward. This is not a time in American history to sit back and be apathetic. Vermont does not need stagnation, and as a state, we must be bold. We must be bold in the face of the headwinds from Washington. We must be bold in the face of continuing unpredictability from Congress. And we must be bold in the face of the chaos from the White House. Vermont doesn't just need a government. Vermont needs a leader. At this time of great uncertainty, it is the wrong approach to pit communities against each other, often for resources, and to make our state department and agency fight for those who get the smallest budget cuts. As your governor, I will focus on growing our economy and making sure there's more food on the table and, and we're not just fighting for the scraps. As your governor, I will kickstart the rural economy. We need strategic investments. Our existing copper infrastructure is not capable of the type of fast data transfer that's needed for modern businesses. I will get fiber optic to every home and business in Vermont so every Vermonter can partake in the 21st century economy. Yeah. We're gonna do this so artists can, can reach their, their customers all around the world. We're gonna do this so entrepreneurs can build global supply chains. And so farmers can use modern field management and manure management systems. And so Vermont can be a player in the world of distance learning. I will invest in programs for displaced workers with a focus on job retraining for current and future job opportunities. I will be the governor who works with the legislature to finally raise the minimum wage. <laughs> now, as Vermonters choose their governor this fall, they must ask themselves, does this person have the skills and the track record to deliver for Vermont families and communities? When I took over as CEO of Vermont Electric Cooperative, we were under threat. We had been warned that the state could revoke our certificate of public good. Stated simply, we were failing. So I turned to all the employees for help. One of my core beliefs is 95% of people get up in the morning and want to do a good job. It was my job to give the co-op's employees the tools and systems to do that good job. This is the role of the leader of any organization. And this should be the role of Vermont's governor. Anyone who thinks solutions to balancing our education funding formula can be dictated from the fifth floor of the pavilion is only fooling themselves. It is our teachers, those who get up every morning wanting to do a good job and what's best for our children, who have the solutions. It is the job of the governor to empower those in the trenches to implement creative solutions, not to set demands, not to set mandates. Healthy schools are the heart of Vermont communities. As governor, I won't dictate the future of local communities. I will work with local school boards to build financially sustainable solutions with meaningful community buy-in and support. Vermont has demonstrated that when our state government works with local communities and businesses, we can be a national leader. Vermont has done this with addressing climate change. As governor, I will not just embrace this legacy, I will move it forward. I participated in the development of the Solar Pathways Vermont Plan with the U.S. Department of Energy and Vermont Energy Investment Corporation. This plan will get Vermont to 90% renewably sourced energy by 2050. Having Vermont source its energy locally will not only help grow our economy, but is the right thing to do for our planet and for our children. 
the right thing to do is often not the easiest path. My path to being my authentic self was certainly not easy. However, it's always been important to me to live openly and honestly. I chose to transition in a very public way because I felt I owed it to those at Vermont Electric Co-op who had put their trust in me. That journey taught me things I had never imagined. I remember the first time a stranger said to, told me to smile. <laughs> the pervasive nature of sexism in our country is certainly not a thing of the past. I have been long dedicated to the principle of equal pay for equal work, and what my transition, my transition has taught me is we have, a, we have a long way to go. Now Vermont has a variety of problems where we have a long way to go. We have a mental health care system that's in crisis. Between 2011 and 2016, more people died of self-inflicted gunshot wounds than from automobile accidents. We have the highest rate of incarceration of African American men in all of 50 states. From 2000 to 2016, reported hate crimes in Vermont increased over 200%. And we have prescription drug costs that are increasing at 50 times the rate of inflation. It is time we had a governor that's willing to lead on these issues. It's time we had a governor who will discuss Vermont's issues as openly as they discuss budget cuts. It is time we had a governor who will work proactively and collaboratively with the, with the legislature to construct policies and, and to address these issues. And more importantly, it, we, it's time we have a governor who is honest about these problems, recognize that rhetoric is not leadership. So let's be honest with each other. I cannot fix our criminal justice system alone. I cannot fix the, the legacy of racial discrimination alone. I cannot lower our state's suicide rate alone. I cannot end the opiate crisis alone. I cannot do this without your help. But together, together we will do all of this. Together we will deliver real change. Together we will improve the lives of Vermonters. And together we will make Vermont the leader we know is possible. So I ask you to stand with me to fulfill Vermont's real tradition, a tradition of national leadership. I ask you to join me in being bold. I ask you to join me to ensure that our children and our children's children look back to 2018 and say, that was the year we made history. 